Hello everyone and welcome to yorkzuki.com. Today I want to talk about the entrepreneurial life cycle. It's based on a book called Managing Corporate Life Cycle and it's an adaptation from that book. Uh, the book was highlighted to me by Dr. Keith Furhurst and I was eternally grateful because it brought up some incredible realizations about why entrepreneurs fail. So I'm going to split, I'm going to explain to you uh, this life cycle in two parts. The first part, I'm going to show you what the life entrepreneurial life cycle looks like. And in the second part, we're going to analyze why the knowledge of the different phases of that life cycle could possibly save you from failure. So you ready to, le to go? Let's go. So you're probably well acquainted with the typical bell curve of a business. The starting phase, growth phase, plateau phase, and failure phase, right? Now let's break it into more, more detail. In the first phase, here is you, the entrepreneur, the innovator. It may, you may be a university student, a high school student. Maybe you are unemployed, or maybe you're working somewhere and you've got this idea of what you've always had on how to change the world. So you come up with an idea. Let's call it the idea phase. Wonderful. You're spending a lot of time thinking, drawing, creating. Maybe you're already doing a prototype website. doesn't matter if it's a service or a product. You are tinkering. As you start developing, you go into the prototype phase of your business. Now you have a service or a product which you're now starting to bring to market. You're starting to ask friends to look at it, test it, drop it on the floor, see if it, uh, if it uh, continues working. As the prototype merges into, let's say, the two to five clients phase, the early days, these are the two to five clients who know you by reputation. They didn't buy into your business yet because your business is too young. These are the days when they believe you, the jockey, not the horse. The two to five clients now starts becoming the 10 to 50 clients. And the numbers of clients is irrelevant here, just to make a point. This is a 10 to 50 clients phase. And this is a phase where you, the entrepreneur, are now semi-exhausted. You're rushing left, right and center, hiring new people, managing staff, contracts, following up on unpaid invoices, still doing product research and development and so forth. And then we go into the, let's call it the 100 to 1000 clients phase. This is a phase where you are completely out of your depth. And I'll explain to you just now what happens in this phase. But this is a phase about fine-tuning processes, systems, back office, delivery, just-in-time, logistics, product development, manufacturing, high-speed manufacturing, and the likes. Then we go into the 1,000 clients plus phase. This is the multinational phase. Now you're not fine-tuning products and services so much as now entering in international agreements, finding partners in new regions, expanding internationally, new legal systems, currency fluctuations, delivery, depending on the service and the product. And then comes a phase which every business stress, which is the phase of slowdown. <clears throat> There's no new clients, you've now expanded in a lot of markets, you're struggling, your products and services are not as exciting anymore. And if you don't save it, you start going into the business turn around, turn around phase. And if that doesn't go well, you go into business close phase. This is a horrible phase to be in. But interestingly enough, a lot of entrepreneurs who go through this phase and you cannot not go through failures in your business life. They just don't involve all the cycle. Usually they go from this cycle straight to close. And then a couple of times, and here you come up with a new idea, and let's draw a nice light bulb. <laughs> and you come up with this brilliant new idea and you start this whole cycle from scratch. Now, why is this so important to you? I'm just going to take another pen to highlight it. In this initial phase, you are in charge of your business. You are the go-to person in the idea phase, in the prototype phase. You might be working with a 3D printer. You might be working with an engineer to figure out the solution. But at the, at the core, it's you involved in the business. Two to five clients, still you. Ten to fifty clients, it's you, but you are exhausted. You're spending all your days and weekends in the office, in the factory, you in the co-working space. 
this is already a phase when you should be working not so much on growing the business, but on kicking yourself out of the business. Now, what do I mean by that? This phase from here onwards is a phase reserved for professional business managers. These are not entrepreneurs. Here you need people you probably wouldn't associate yourself with in the first place. They're not people you'll necessarily get along with intuitively. You are the idea person, the change the world person. This is a phase for number crunching, for accountants and lawyers, for professional business managers who are fine-tuning the back office, the support structure, the finance requirement, the factoring, the pricing, different pricing options, uh, game theory approaches to new markets. This is not a fun phase. This is a nitty-gritty, detailed-oriented, fine-tuning phase which most entrepreneurs are inherently unable to cope with. If you look at Google, Sergey and Larry were actually kicked out by the investors, so to speak, and they hired, um, I just forgot the name, to actually run Google in the first few years. This is why you should now be here. You as an entrepreneur should not, once you're starting to really get traction, be involved in the day-to-day -day running of a business. That doesn't mean sitting at home and cashing on the dividends. That means maybe, depending on your passion and your specific background, focusing more on sales of a specific clients. Maybe it's focusing on R&D. Maybe it's prototyping or improving uh, the product or the service. Maybe it's... Uh, the ambassador who goes and, raises, and waves a flag for your brand across uh, conferences, webinars and the likes. Interestingly enough, at this phase, when you start reaching growth, and sometimes these two phases don't exist, after 50 clients you start slow, seeing a slowdown, you find that this is where the entrepreneur needs to come back. Because this is a phase where you, the entrepreneur, the innovator, Maybe you have an idea to develop version 2 of your software, of your product or your service. This is where you start introducing a whole new line, a curve of innovation. We're actually duplicating this bell curve again over here and again. Prototypes, slow traction, growth and so forth. Now do you see why it's so important? Now a lot of entrepreneurs never make it to this phase in fairness. There's a bit of luck involved as much as um, professional mentors suggest. Otherwise, there is a degree of being at the right time in the right place. Elon Musk, for example, we probably would never have heard of him the way we know him today had he not been at the right time when Obama started pushing for tax incentives in the renewable space. That gave him, if I remember correctly, four and a half billion dollars worth of finance to tap into. So again, it sometimes depends, but here this curve generally works across all the entrepreneurs that we've researched and supported over the years. Obviously, in the business turnaround, you might even want to bring a specific business rescue practitioner. And then the closing, as painful as it is often, this is an incredibly good university for round two of your business. It's incredible how we entrepreneurs, as painful as this phase is, thrive on the challenge to go for round two. Now, why is this also important for us entrepreneurs? Is this, in the idea phase, you might still be having a job if you're lucky enough. So you have some sort of income to spend on the prototype. But as soon as you start hitting the five, two to five clients, you start now needing money. Now, here's a, where most entrepreneurs make a mistake. In the prototype to early days traction, they start looking for enormous amounts of money. I have an idea that's going to change the world and I'm looking for an angel investor who will put a hundred million. It really doesn't matter what the amount is. But you're looking for incredible amounts of money that very unlikely you will never ever find. Because the investor who believes so much in you that will put money until the end of your cycle doesn't really exist. Even Google only got one million dollars at the beginning. They went through multiple rounds of funding, funding as the business grew. So, why is that important? If you say, you know what, I need just enough money to get me from two to five clients to 50 clients. 
your funding requirement requirements are much less. It makes you that much more interesting to potential investors who also appreciate the fact that you are realistic, that you understand that there isn't unlimited funding available in the world. The next phase, 100, 10 to 100 or 100 to 1,000 clients, is a phase often which is a hybrid between funding and financing. Not everything here now needs. Now it's equipment purchases. Now it's uh, stock buying. And this part here is often just pure financing. And usually it's even being able to do it internally. This is why it is so important to understand the cycle. From the one hand, know where you are adding value to your company and where you are actually the bottleneck, the individual who is going to destroy your company. On the other hand, when you break this down in steps, you require much less funding and I guarantee you there's many more opportunities in short-term finance and short-term funding, whether it's grant, investor-led, angel or the likes, when you are very clear on what that funding is needed for. I hope this helps and wishing you all the best in your journeys. Thank you for watching.